bring up, uh, without any further ado, Sean O. Coulin, who is the director of Men at Lunch. Uh, well, one thing occurred to me during it, seeing all the photographers up there and all the construction workers and everybody up there, and I was just thinking, what the hell is wrong with these people? <laughs> I was getting <laughs> dizzy just looking at them, but of course, uh, like, uh, like they said, there was a, there was an, these guys took these jobs for the lack of, of any other choices, correct? Well, that's true. I think uh, you probably have to differentiate between the photographers <laughs> and the yes. iron workers. I think the... the uh, yeah, what was their excuse then? <laughs> uh, photographers, you, uh, you still have photographers doing crazy stuff for that shot. Everyone wants to get the definitive shot. I'm not sure if Joe Woolhead is still here. He's, he's, the, uh, he's a photographer on the World Trade Center. Uh, and he... Uh, oh, I, he's I, here. I, I, he was here. I think he, I think he might have just left. Okay. Um, but he... he he goes. He he takes crazy risks just to get that shot to get the yeah. the shot of the build. So yeah, it's an incredible story. Uh, so because you guys did uh, decide uh, visually to make it a three dimensional uh, image at times, coming full circle, coming from the back, and then also doing some some sort of uh, dioramatic yeah. kind of talk about that and like how you arrived at how to keep. Presenting this ex this image over and over throughout the uh, 80 minutes or so of the film in a fresh way. Yeah, well, that's one of the, the hardest thing we had had to do was to, uh, even though it's a great photograph, you you can't repeat and repeat. Now you, we had to repeat and repeat in certain places, but we wanted to give the audience something else. Now we got that by uh, some of the 3D imagery. Uh, we just chanced upon the work of Thomas Leverett, who you see there. He did the the, the three-dimensional work from behind, the CGI stuff coming from behind and. Uh, below, that's all computer generated graphics, and he did a great job. And we just happened to be, he just happened to be working on that project at the same time, so we collaborated on that. And uh, I think he did a great job, and I think it really adds to the you people get to see something else, you know, you get to see the men from behind. And I think that's a that's a even though it's, I think it's a great visual because we're, we're well used to seeing it from the other side, but just to see the men uh, from the back of the men, or if there was another shot to the side, I'd love to see that too, you know. Uh, yes. Uh, right, right over there. Yes, yes. What made you want to make this movie? What, 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 what inspired you to make the movie? You want to talk about that, Eamon? Um Yeah, I, I had this photograph when I was in college. It was on the wall. Um, I had it in my in, in my room. Um, but when we were filming, um, in I think it was two thousand and six, seven, we were in Shenaglish and we were we we ventured into Whelan's pub for for coffee, and um, that's where it all started for us. We we just. It just by it, it was by chance, and we we saw on the on the wall the the note um from from uh, from Pat Glynn, and that just that's where it led from us, and it's just well this is just cool, um and we just followed the story and we got in touch with the O'Shaughnessys, which we are here tonight in the Glens in in Boston, and that's where the story began in Whelan's Pub in Galway. Mm. So we we had no real design to uh, tell the story, just it, we just fell into our laps and we ran with it really. For me, it was just going to the archives. There's, there are two archives shown in the film. One is the, the Rockefeller Archive, Centre Archives, and is the Corvus Collection Archives. And for any uh, would-be detective or filmmaker, it's just a treasure trove of th the most amazing photographs we have ever seen or have been taken, but also of the construction build of the, of the Rockefeller Centre. I think there's an amazing little archive in there. Uh, I think Christine is here, she's in, uh, she's in charge of that and she cooperated with me uh, in the documentary. And just to be, to touch the prints that were there that day, to, uh, to, to be just at the same time and cross-referencing some of the photographs with each other to find out uh, who the other photographers on the beam were that day who were up there and who the who the uh, the men were the search continues for the rest, rest of the men of course but for me that would that, that was been in the archives uh, because not many people get a chance to, to to delve into those archives and do some research there yeah but for me it's just it, it was I, I knew the photograph was was famous and people had had you know were drawn to it but it's just that the, uh, everybody feels a connection to it um, and I, I'm not sure, is there anyone other than the Shoshanasis and the uh, Glins, are, 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 is there anyone else here that knows someone on the beam? Because when we were in Toronto in September, you know, somebody came up to me and said, that's my grandfather. You know, it's just, it, 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 it's, it, it surprised me that in any, in, in any room, like whether it's two or three hundred people in, you'll at least find someone that has some connection with the photograph. And it just, it, it never ends. It's just the, 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 I, I, the mystery behind it. Even if they, we find out, all, say, ten of the guys, there'll always be 
the story of the eleventh guy. You know, it's just the, sure. the, the story just keeps yeah. on. There's a different chapter every time you speak to someone. There are thousands of guys yeah. on that girder, yeah. aren't there? I mean, and that kind of answers also the yeah. gentleman's question it, about it. It was amazing when, when we were filming, and um, we asked just a lady in the street, "What did the photo mean to her?" She said, "Well, it's like there's every country in the world up there. Like each person on the beam represents each country. You know, you, that's the kind of way that people f feel. That, you know, that that's the kind of uh, connection people have to the photograph. And I, 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 I knew there was a big." Uh, following and you know traction to the photograph beforehand, but that that's really that stood out for me. There's another photograph. Yeah, it's remarkable. We were uh, surfing online for this for for the poster about four or five years ago. I wanted to buy the buy the the picture from my office, and but the one I got in the post was remarkably taking, uh, taken about four or five seconds after the famous photograph here. Um, it shows uh, uh, Matty Shocknessy on the far side, get, and he's just inhaling his cigarette. Uh, he's inhaling, in, a cigarette. inhaling a cigarette. So it's taken literally a split second afterwards. Uh, the guy on the far, they all have different uh, expressions. Uh, when we f followed up the trail with the poster company as to where they got the original print, they didn't really know, and the conversation ended pretty quickly. Mm. Um, so, I really, that does exist. That photograph exists. I don't know if a negative exists anywhere, but that photograph does exist, and it's a uh, remarkable piece. It'll turn up eventually. It so turn up, yeah. Yeah, it has to. Has anyone else seen that? Seen the piece? Uh, seen that? Uh, seen that poster? The version of the poster taken a couple of seconds later. You see the kin? Yeah, only uh. only one. You don't have the negative by any chance, no. <laughs> <laughs> Was uh, were you surprised that this was the most popular image? Being you know, I I wasn't no personally no. It's be, it's in every school dorm in Ireland. Um, for some reason, um, people connected. It still has a resonance with uh, with with a newer generation, uh, and I've, that I think is a remarkable thing that it has stood the test of time. That single image of eleven men, ordinary men, w sitting on a beam, uh, for some reason it still uh, resonates with a, with a, with a newer audience. Answer that earlier. I I, th I thought that was the big thing that stood out for me. That you know that e everybody has you know if if, if there's uh, every time Ser Sergio the sculpture the guy that owns the skull he's going down to Times Square now. You know he's going to have a th sure. you know a, a yeah. couple of hundred people just stopping looking at him. You know it's just that there's 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 just it's never ending. I don't know you know what's the next chapter of you know what 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 people um, you know will they will we find out one other guy? You know it's just it, it's it's amazing. How how um, everything just you know that just it's uh, what word am I looking for? It's just it's just it's it, it's amazing how how people just want to see the photo. You know yeah. more news and it, yeah. and it's connective. It's yeah. it's it's like a connective thing for experience. But also the mystery. Who wants to know? Who wants to know the identity of all the eleven men? I I'd always like if there were, there was certain mystery left left sure, there. Sure, right. That if there's a well, right. You don't want to get to the end of the mystery because then what what's left? Uh, okay, guys. Thanks so much. There's plenty more to see. Thank you for Doc NYC. It's going on all the way through next Thursday. Plenty plenty of fantastic documentaries left to see. Thank you very much. <laughs>